Zephyr lay bleeding in the alien jungle, the wreckage of her shuttle strewn around her, death approaching until the human soldier found her. Walter Williams stomped through the dense foliage, assault rifle locked and loaded. His heavy boots sunk into the thick mud with each step. His eyes scanned the alien trees for any sign of the Jem'Hadar ambassador. The Galactic Council was counting on him. They needed this warrior princess found alive, or the fragile peace with the Jem'Hadar could shatter. The Jem'Hadar were too proud to admit they couldn't handle this planet alone, but after five of their search parties vanished, they finally called on the humans for help. Only the human special forces had the grit and survival skills to operate on this brutal rock, and Walter was the toughest of them all. A glint of scorched metal caught his eye through the leaves. Hacking through vines with his machete, he found the crashed remains of a Jem'Hadar shuttle. Scorch marks from energy weapons crisscrossed its hull. Dark purple blood flecked the ground, leaving a trail deeper into the jungle. Walter popped out his rifle's magazine, checked the rounds and slammed it back in. Ignoring his own fatigue, he followed the alien blood spatters between the trees, unsure if he was walking into a rescue or an ambush. All he knew was he had to push on and keep looking, no matter what monsters or hazards this planet threw at him next. The peace treaty and countless human lives depended on him completing this mission. The trail of purple blood spattered over gnarled tree roots led Walter deeper into the planet's jungle. The canopy blocked most of the sunlight, leaving him navigating a shadowy sea of alien foliage. His grip on the rifle tightened. A thousand dangers could be lurking in the tangled underbrush, but only one mattered right now, finding Ambassador Zephyr before it was too late. Walter stepped into a small clearing and froze. He spotted the towering Jem'Hadar warrior propped against a tree trunk. Dark blood oozed from scorched holes ripped through his armor. Zephyr's head lolled to the side, barely conscious. Walter crept closer, keeping his rifle trained on the wounded ambassador. Don't shoot, Zephyr rasped. He raised a trembling hand in a gesture of peace. I mean you no harm. Walter hesitated. Every instinct told him this could be a trap. The Jem'Hadar were known for their cunning. But looking at the battered warrior... He saw no deception in those glazed reptilian eyes, only pain and desperation. My shuttle was attacked, Zephyr coughed, spattering blood down his chest. A rival faction of Jem'Hadar opposed to the treaty. They want war, not peace. Shot me down, left me for dead. The rifle barrel dipped as realization sank in. If Zephyr died here, the peace Walter's people had sacrificed so much for would unravel. The Jem'Hadar would blame the humans for failing to protect their ambassador. Fragile trust would shatter, and the galaxy would burn again. Damn it, Walter muttered. He slung the rifle over his shoulder and knelt beside Zephyr. Pulling a medkit from his pack, he began dressing the worst of the warrior's wounds. Who's behind this? The faction that attacked you? Zephyr gritted his teeth as Walter worked. Kragnak, a warlord thinks the Jem'Hadar should conquer the galaxy, enslave weaker races, can't stand that we've made peace with humans. Walter tied off a bandage, Kragnuk. The name wasn't familiar, but it already sounded like trouble. How many warriors does he have? What are we up against? Hundreds. Well-armed, well-trained. Dangerous. Zephyr shook his head. They won't stop until I'm dead. Until they shatter the treaty and reignite the war... Walter helped the massive Jem'Hadar to his feet, letting Zephyr lean on him for support. Extraction just got a whole lot harder. They'd be hunted every step of the way, with merciless killers on their trail. But what choice did they have? The alternative was letting the galaxy burn. Together the human soldier and the alien warrior stumbled off into the jungle. The shadows swallowed them as they went, two unlikely allies bound by the slender hope of peace. Walter and Zephyr pushed on through the tangled jungle, vines and branches grabbing at them as they struggled forward. The Jem'Hadar's towering form leaned heavily on Walter, making the trek slow and arduous. Sweat poured down Walter's back under the sweltering canopy. His legs burned, his shoulders ached, but he pushed the pain aside. They had to keep moving. 
The distant roar of rushing water reached his ears, growing louder with each step. They stumbled out of the underbrush onto the muddy bank of a wide, fast-moving river. White water churned and frothed as it raced by. On the other side, the jungle continued, an impenetrable wall of green. Shit, Walter muttered. He scanned the riverbank, looking for a way across. His gaze landed on a rope bridge spanning the gap. It was a rickety thing, the boards worn and the ropes frayed. It sagged in the middle, looking like it would snap under a strong breeze. Walter helped Zephyr to the edge of the bridge. He tested it with one boot, feeling the ropes creak and the boards shift. It was their only option. The Jem'Hadar would never make it across the river in his condition. Come on, Walter said, one step at a time, I've got you. They started across, the bridge swaying and bouncing with each step. Walter kept a tight grip on Zephyr, steadying the larger warrior. The ropes groaned under their combined weight. Zephyr's breath came in pained gasps, his injuries sapping his strength. Halfway across, a shout rang out from the other bank. Walter's head snapped up. A group of Jem'Hada warriors burst out of the jungle, energy rifles raised. Kragnak's men had found them. Down! Walter yelled. He shoved Zephyr to the bridge's rough planks as energy blasts sizzled overhead. The smell of ozone filled the air. Walter crawled forward, dragging Zephyr with him. They had to get off this bridge. A bolt sliced through the ropes just as they reached the center. The bridge lurched, tilting wildly. Walter grabbed for the guide ropes, but it was too late. With a snap, the ropes gave way. The bridge collapsed, dropping them into the churning river below. The shock of the cold water drove the breath from Walter's lungs. The current grabbed him, tumbling him head over heels. He kicked for the surface, his waterlogged gear weighing him down. He broke through, gasping for air. The river swept him along, slamming him into boulders. A flash of red caught his eye. Zephyr, struggling to keep his head above the froth. The gem Hadar's heavy armor was dragging him under. Walter struck out toward him, fighting the current. He grabbed Zephyr by the back of his collar, hauling his face out of the water. Hang on, Walter shouted over the river's roar. He struck out for the bank, towing Zephyr behind him. His muscles screamed with the effort. The current pushed back, trying to drag them under. After what felt like hours, Walter's boots touched bottom. He heaved Zephyr up onto the muddy bank and collapsed beside him. They lay there, chests heaving, lungs burning. The damp jungle loam soaked into Walter's clothes. He pushed himself up on shaky arms and checked his equipment. His rifle was gone, lost to the river. The communicator sparked and fizzed when he tried it, waterlogged beyond repair. He tossed it aside with a curse. No way to call for extraction now. Distant shouts echoed through the trees. Kragnak's warriors still on their trail. Walter hauled himself to his feet and reached down to help Zephyr up. The Jem'Hadar swayed, his wounds taking their toll. We have to keep moving, Walter said. Find somewhere defensible to hole up, come on. He slung Zephyr's arm over his shoulders, taking the warrior's weight. Together they stumbled off into the jungle, seeking cover from the hunters on their heels. Walter and Zephyr staggered through the underbrush, their lungs burning, muscles aching. The relentless pursuit of Kragnak's warriors drove them onward, deeper into the alien jungle. Sweat poured down Walter's face, stinging his eyes. Zephyr leaned heavily against him, the gem Hadar's wounds sapping his strength with each step. As they pushed through a tangle of vines, a sheer cliff face loomed before them, rising from the jungle floor like a stone sentinel. Walter scanned the rock, searching for a way up, a way out. Then he saw it. A narrow fissure, barely wide enough for a man, half hidden behind a screen of foliage. There, he grunted, pointing. Might be a cave, shelter. Zephyr nodded, too exhausted to speak. They stumbled to the cliff base, shoving aside the concealing vines. A cool air wafted from the opening, carrying the scent of damp stone and ancient dust. Walter clicked on his helmet light and stepped inside, Zephyr close behind. The cave walls closed in around them as they moved deeper, the passage narrowing until they had to turn sideways to pass. Walter's light played over the rock, casting eerie shadows. Their breathing echoed in the confined space. 
Suddenly the tunnel opened into a larger chamber. Walter stepped out, sweeping his light across the space. It danced over intricate carvings etched into the walls, depicting fierce Jem'Hadar warriors locked in battle, towering figures wielding energy blades and rifles. Alien script flowed between the images, the characters harsh and angular. Zephyr limped to the nearest wall, running his fingers over the carvings. A shrine, he said softly, to our ancestors, the greatest warriors of the Jem'Hadar. He turned to Walter, his reptilian eyes gleaming in the helmet light. Honor is everything to our people. It is what defines us, what drives us. His voice turned bitter. Kragnak has forgotten this. He seeks only power and conquest. He will lead our race to ruin. Walter nodded slowly. He understood the weight of honor, the burden of duty. It was what had brought him to this hostile world, what drove him to complete his mission no matter the cost. We'll stop him, Walter said. We'll get you to the extraction point, preserve the peace. Zephyr dipped his head in acknowledgement. They sank to the chamber floor, backs against the carved walls. Walter dug in his pack for his medkit, tending to Zephyr's wounds with the last of his supplies. As he worked, they spoke of battles fought and comrades lost, of the scars that warfare left on the soul. In that ancient shrine, a human and a Jem'Hadar found a moment of understanding of shared purpose. The crack of an energy rifle shattered the quiet. A bolt sizzled past Walter's ear, scorching the wall. He cursed, diving for cover behind a jutting stone formation. Zephyr rolled to the side as more shots filled the chamber, chips of rock flying. Kragnak's warriors flooded into the shrine, their grey armour gleaming in the dim light. They fanned out, rifles scanning for targets. Walter drew his sidearm, the weapon puny against the Jem'Hadar's superior firepower. Go, he yelled to Zephyr over the chaos. I'll hold them off. The ambassador hesitated for a split second, then nodded. He disappeared into a side tunnel as Walter opened fire, the pistol bucking in his grip. A Jem'Hadar fell, clutching his throat, but the others kept coming. Walter fired until the weapon clicked empty, then charged forward, a battle cry on his lips. He slammed into the nearest warrior, driving him back with a flurry of blows. They grappled, slamming each other against the carved walls. More Jem'Hadar surged forward, trying to overwhelm Walter with sheer numbers. He fought like a man possessed, his fists and feet striking with brutal precision. Bodies littered the chamber floor, but still they came. A rifle butt slammed into Walter's temple, sending him reeling. He staggered back, vision blurring, a kick to his chest drove the air from his lungs. He fell to his knees, gasping. Through the haze of pain, he saw a gap in the press of bodies, a narrow opening leading to a high ledge outside the cave. Sucking in a breath, he surged to his feet and ran, shoving past the startled Jem'Hadar. He burst out onto the ledge, the bright sun blinding after the cave's gloom. Blinking away tears, he found himself face to face with a towering figure, clad in ornate armor, a crackling energy blade in his hand. Kragnak. The warlord snarled, his blade slashing down. Walter threw himself aside, the weapon cleaving the air where he'd stood. He came up in a fighter's crouch, fists raised. Kragnak lunged, blade humming. Walter danced back, the edge missing him by inches. They traded blows on the narrow ledge, the jungle stretching out far below. Kragnak was fast, far faster than a being his size should be. His blade wove a deadly pattern, forcing Walter back, ever closer to the edge. Walter ducked a slash that would have taken his head, feeling the heat of the blade singe his hair. He lashed out with a kick, his boot slamming into Kragnak's knee. The warlord stumbled, his stance faltering. Walter pressed the attack, pummeling Kragnak with a barrage of strikes, but the Jem'Hadar absorbed the blows, his armor turning away the worst of the impacts. He backhanded Walter across the face, sending him sprawling. The human struggled to rise, his head ringing. Kragnak loomed over him, energy blade raised for the killing stroke. Walter stared up at his death, snarling his defiance. Suddenly, Zephyr was there, slamming into Kragnak from behind. The two Jem'Hadar tumbled forward, momentum carrying them over the edge, they plummeted from the cliff, 
locked in combat, and vanished into the jungle far below. Walter, Zephyr, and Kragnak plummeted through the thick jungle canopy, the dense foliage absorbing the worst of the impact as they crashed to the ground in a tangle of limbs. Branches snapped, and leaves exploded outwards from the force of their landing. Walter's head swam, his vision blurring from the shock. Pain lanced through his body, but he pushed it aside. He rolled to his hands and knees, frantically searching for his rifle amidst the undergrowth. There, the weapon lay a few feet away, half hidden beneath a fern. He lunged for it, fingers outstretched. A heavy boot slammed down on his wrist, pinning his hand. Walter looked up into Kragnak's snarling face. The warlord, battered but unbroken, reached for the rifle himself. Walter surged upwards, driving his shoulder into Kragnak's chest. The two warriors tumbled backwards, grappling for dominance. Fists flew and elbows slammed into flesh as they fought, rolling through the tangled vines and roots. Nearby, Zephyr dragged himself towards the fray, his breathing ragged. Dark blood seeped through the bandages Walter had applied. The ambassador's strength was fading, but still he crawled onwards, determined to help. Kragnak gained the upper hand, pinning Walter beneath him. The warlord's hands closed around the human's throat, squeezing. Walter's vision tunneled, his lungs screaming for air. He clawed at Kragnak's arms, but the Jem'Hadar's grip was iron. Suddenly the pressure vanished. Zephyr, with a wordless roar of effort, had tackled Kragnak from behind. The two Jem'Hadar rolled away, locked in a desperate struggle. Their fight carried them deeper into the jungle, smashing through the undergrowth. Walter sucked in a gasping breath and staggered to his feet. He snatched up his rifle and charged after Zephyr and Kragnak, following the trail of destruction they left in their wake. He burst into a small clearing and skidded to a halt. Zephyr lay crumpled on the ground, unmoving. Kragnak stood over him, an energy blade humming in his hand. The warlord raised the weapon high, preparing to deliver the killing stroke. Walter reacted instantly. He brought his rifle to his shoulder, sighting down the barrel. His finger tightened on the trigger. The weapon kicked against his palm. The blast caught Kragnak square in the chest, burning through his armor. The warlord staggered back, his blade falling from nerveless fingers. He toppled backwards, hitting the ground with a heavy thud. Thin wisps of smoke curled from the hole in his chest. Walter crossed to Zephyr in three long strides, dropping to his knees beside the fallen warrior. The ambassador's eyes were closed, his breathing shallow. Fresh blood stained his bandages a vivid crimson. With a grunt of effort, Walter hefted Zephyr over his shoulders in a fireman's carry. The Jem'Hadar groaned softly, his head lolling against Walter's back. Walter gritted his teeth and pushed to his feet, staggering slightly under Zephyr's bulk. He set off into the jungle at a lumbering jog, his muscles burning with the strain. Zephyr needed medical attention, and fast. Every second counted. Walter could only hope that his team was still waiting at the extraction point. If they weren't... He pushed the thought aside, one problem at a time. Right now all that mattered was getting Zephyr to safety. Everything else could wait. Her wounded ally on his shoulders, hostile territory all around, the success of the mission hanging in the balance. Just another day at the office, Walter thought grimly. He adjusted his grip on Zephyr and pushed onward into the waiting jungle. Walter slogged through the dense jungle, Zephyr's limp form draped across his shoulders. The Jem'Hadar's blood soaked into Walter's uniform, hot and sticky against his skin. Each step was an effort, his muscles screaming under the alien's weight. Tangled roots and vines grabbed at his boots, threatening to send them both sprawling. Night fell, plunging the jungle into inky blackness. Walter staggered into a small clearing and eased Zephyr to the ground. The Jem'Hadar groaned, his breathing shallow and labored. Walter fumbled for his medkit, his hands trembling with exhaustion. He injected Zephyr with the last of the painkillers, and set about changing the blood-soaked bandages. The wounds were deep, seeping with dark fluid. Walter's field medicine skills were rudimentary at best. Zephyr needed real medical attention, and soon. As Walter worked, Zephyr's eyes fluttered open. The Jem'Hadar's gaze was unfocused, his words slurred. 
Outpost in the jungle, he rasped. Medical facility, advanced, find it, only hope. Walter leaned closer, his brow furrowed. What outpost, where? But Zephyr had slipped back into unconsciousness, his head lolling to the side. Walter sat back on his heels, his mind racing. A hidden Jem'Hadar outpost, equipped with advanced medical tech. It sounded like a long shot, but what choice did they have? He made Zephyr as comfortable as possible, and settled in for a long night, rifle across his knees. Sleep was a luxury he couldn't afford, not with Kragnak's warriors on their trail. At first light, Walter hoisted Zephyr over his shoulders once more, and set off into the jungle, following the vague directions the delirious Jem'Hadar had provided. He scanned the undergrowth for any sign of Jem'Hadar activity, his senses on high alert. As the day wore on, he began to spot clues. A scrap of grey armour caught on a thorn bush, the faint scorch mark of an energy weapon on a tree trunk, a discarded ration pack, its contents long since consumed by the jungle's scavengers. Encouraged, Walter pressed on, hope kindling in his chest. The signs grew more frequent, leading him deeper into the wilderness. Finally, as the sun began to dip below the canopy, he spotted it. Walter carried Zephyr inside, the bunker's lights flickering to life as they entered. The air smelled stale, tinged with the ozone scent of advanced technology. He found the medical bay and laid Zephyr on an examination table. The facility was well stocked, its shelves lined with devices Walter could only guess at, but there in the centre of the room stood a regeneration pod, its glass canopy gleaming under the harsh lights. Walter placed Zephyr inside, following the instructions on the control panel. The pod hissed shut, its systems humming to life. A soft blue glow enveloped the wounded Jem'Hadar as the machine began its work. Leaving Zephyr to heal, Walter explored the rest of the outpost. In the command centre he found a long-range communicator, its power cells still charged. With trembling fingers, he sent out a distress signal, praying his team was still out there, searching for him. Hours crawled by, marked only by the steady hum of the regeneration pod. Walter paced the bunker, his nerves frayed, his mind spinning with possibilities. What if his signal went unanswered? What if Kragnak found them first? Just as despair threatened to overwhelm him, the pod let out a soft chime. The canopy hissed open and Zephyr emerged, his wounds healed, his strength restored. The two warriors clasped forearms, a gesture of respect and gratitude. But their moment of triumph was short-lived. Alarms blared throughout the outpost, red lights flashing in warning. Walter raced to the security console and pulled up the external feeds. Walter met Zephyr's gaze, saw the same grim resolve reflected there, they were outnumbered, outgunned, and alone, but they were warriors, forged in the crucible of battle. Together they took up positions at the bunker's entrance, weapons primed, ready to make their stand. They would hold the line, for honour, for duty, for the dream of peace. And they would not fall. Walter and Zephyr sprang into action, fortifying the outpost with practiced efficiency. They repositioned the base's automated defense turrets, programming them to target the approaching hostiles. Trip mines were laid in strategic choke points, primed to detonate when the enemy drew near. As the first wave of Kragnak's forces entered visual range, Walter and Zephyr took up positions on either side of the outpost's main entrance. The shimmering distortion of the base's energy shield enveloped them, a thin but resilient barrier against the coming storm. The Jem'Hadar loyalists opened fire, energy bolts sizzling through the air and slamming into the shield. It held barely the impacts, sending ripples across its surface. Walter and Zephyr returned fire, their weapons spitting plasma at the advancing enemy. Through the chaos of battle, the two warriors fell into a seamless rhythm. Walter laid down suppressing fire, forcing the Jem'Hadar to take cover, while Zephyr picked off the exposed targets with ruthless precision. They made a lethal team, their skills honed by a lifetime of warfare. But even their formidable prowess couldn't stem the tide forever. For every Jem'Hadar that fell, two more seemed to take their place, an unending wave of fanatical warriors. 
In a momentary lull as the last of the current wave fell back to regroup, Zephyr turned to Walter. The towering warrior's face was grim, his eyes haunted. There is something you must know, he said, his voice low and urgent. Within this outpost lies a powerful artifact, the Blade of Kazrak. It is said to grant immense power to the one who wields it. Walter's brow furrowed. And you think this blade can help us turn the tide? Zephyr nodded. It is our only hope. If we can retrieve it, we may yet have a chance to prevail against Kragnak's forces. Walter took a deep breath, weighing the risks. To leave their defensive position now with the enemy so close was a gamble. But what choice did they have? To stay was to invite certain death. All right, he said at last. Let's do it. Lead the way. They plunged into the depths of the outpost, the sounds of battle fading behind them. The corridors were eerily silent, the only sound the echo of their footsteps on the metal deck. But the silence didn't last. As they neared the heart of the outpost, a group of Kragnak's elite warriors emerged from the shadows, energy blades humming to life. The Jem'Hadar charged, their battle cries echoing off the walls. Walter and Zephyr met them head-on, rifles blazing. They fought their way through the press of bodies, leaving a trail of fallen enemies in their wake. But the elite warriors were skilled, and they exacted a heavy toll. By the time they reached the artifact chamber, both Walter and Zephyr were battered and bleeding, their armor scorched and rent. But they were alive, and the blade of Kazrak was within reach. The chamber was vast, its walls lined with ancient Jem'Hadar hieroglyphs and there in the center, hovering above a stone pedestal, was the blade. It pulsed with an inner light, its surface etched with intricate runes. But they weren't alone. Standing between them and the blade was a massive Jem'Hadar, his armor adorned with the sigils of Kragnak's inner circle, Grakthar, Kragnak's most loyal lieutenant. The towering warrior stepped forward, a cruel smile on his lips. "'You've come far, human,' he said, his voice a rumble but this is where your journey ends. Walter stepped forward, bringing his rifle to bear. We'll see about that. The two warriors clashed rifle against energy blade. They danced a deadly waltz, striking and parrying, each seeking an opening. Walter was fast, his reflexes honed by years of combat. But Grakthar was strong, his blows heavy enough to rattle Walter's bones. As they fought, Zephyr inched towards the pedestal his eyes fixed on the blade. If he could just reach it. Grakthar saw his movement and redoubled his assault, driving Walter back with a flurry of blows. Walter's rifle flew from his hands, clattering across the floor. Grakthar raised his blade for the killing stroke. And then Zephyr's hand closed around the hilt of the blade of Kazrak. Energy surged through the chamber, blinding in its intensity. Grakthar screamed his body disintegrating in the maelstrom. When the light faded, only Walter and Zephyr remained, the blade pulsing in Zephyr's grip. The Jem'Hadar warrior looked at Walter, a fierce grin on his face. They charged back into the fray, the blade of Kazrak lighting their way. Zephyr was a whirlwind of destruction, the blade slicing through armor and flesh like paper. The Jem'Hadar loyalists fell before him, their weapons useless against the ancient artifact's power. Seeing their champion fall and faced with the legendary blade, the Jem'Hadar wavered, their resolve crumbled, their lines breaking. And then, just as victory seemed within reach, a series of explosions rocked the outpost. Walter's heart leapt, his distress call had been answered, his team was here, attacking the enemy from behind. Caught between the reinforced defenders and the surprise assault, Kragnak's forces broke. They fled into the jungle, their retreat quickly turning into a rout. Walter and his team regrouped at the outpost's entrance, the jungle echoing with the retreating footsteps of Kragnak's broken army. The human soldiers, battered but victorious, eyed the towering Jem'Hadar at Walter's side with wary gazes. Weapons twitched in tired hands, the instinct to aim at the alien warrior hard to suppress. Walter stepped forward, his voice firm. Stand down, this is Ambassador Zephyr. He's the reason we're all still alive. Zephyr inclined his head, the blade of Kazrak glinting in his grip. 
Your commander speaks the truth. We fought as one against Kragnak's treachery. Slowly the tension eased. Rifles lowered, and nods of acknowledgement passed between human and Jem'Hadar, a fragile trust forged in the heat of battle. As the team secured the area, a chime sounded from Zephyr's wrist communicator. The Jem'Hadar's eyes widened as he read the message scrolling across the screen. It's from the High Council. They know what transpired here. They're requesting my immediate presence. Walter frowned. Is that good or bad? I believe it's an opportunity, Zephyr met Walter's gaze. The Council must see that our peoples can work together, that our strength lies in unity. His voice grew resolute. I ask that you and your team accompany me to the homeworld. Your presence will send a powerful message. Walter considered for a moment, then nodded. We started this together. We'll see it through. Zephyr clasped Walter's arm, a warrior's gesture of respect. Then let us waste no time. The group boarded a Jem Hadar transport ship, its angular hull gleaming under the alien sun. As the vessel lifted off, leaving the blood-soaked jungle behind, Walter found Zephyr in the ship's Spartan quarters. The ambassador stood before a viewport, watching the stars blur into the swirling vortex of hyperspace. He turned as Walter approached, his expression somber. I owe you my life, Zephyr said quietly. Without your aid, I would have surely perished on that planet. Walter leaned against the bulkhead, crossing his arms. You held your own. I've never seen anyone fight like that. A ghost of a smile crossed Zephyr's face. High praise from a human warrior. His gaze turned inward. This mission has taught me much. About your people, and about the need for understanding between our kinds. Walter nodded slowly. I admit I had my own prejudices. But fighting alongside you as it's changed things made me see the bigger picture. Their conversation was interrupted by a blaring alarm. The ship's comm system crackled to life. Ambassador, we're picking up a distress signal. It's a galactic council vessel, under attack in a nearby system. Zephyr's eyes met Walter's, the same thought passing between them. Kragnak's loyalists still sowing chaos. Walter checked his rifle already moving towards the airlock. Right behind you. The transport dropped out of hyperspace, the beleaguered council ship filling the viewscreen. Scores of attack craft swarmed around it, missiles and energy blasts pummeling its failing shields. Zephyr's voice rang out over the comm. All ships, this is Ambassador Zephyr. Break off your attack immediately or face the consequences. The enemy ships scattered, reforming into attack formation. A sneering voice crackled over the channel. Traitor, you dishonor the Jem'Hadar with your weakness. Now, you will... The transmission cut off as the Loyalist ships opened fire, their weapons impacting against the transport's shields. The deck shuddered beneath Walter's feet. He braced himself against a bulkhead, meeting Zephyr's determined gaze. No words were needed, they had a job to do. As the transport returned fire... Racing towards the embattled council ship, Walter and Zephyr prepared to board, their weapons primed. They were warriors, forged in the crucible of combat, united by a bond that transcended species or loyalty. And they would not fail. The airlock cycled open, revealing the smoke-filled corridors of the council vessel. Distant explosions echoed through the ship's superstructure, the deck trembling with each impact. Walter and Zephyr charged forward, weapons raised, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The transport shuddered under the onslaught of enemy fire, sparks flying from overloaded consoles. Walter braced himself against a bulkhead, shouting orders to his team over the blaring alarms. Zephyr, take a squad and repel those boarders. The rest of you with me, we're headed to the council ship. The Jem Hadar nodded the blade of Kazarak glinting in his grip. He barked commands in his native tongue, rallying his warriors. They charged down the corridor, their battle cries echoing. Walter led his strike team to the airlock, the deck bucking beneath their feet. They boarded the stricken council vessel, weapons primed. The once pristine halls were choked with smoke, the bodies of the fallen strewn about. 
a wounded crew member stumbled into view, his uniform torn and bloodied. Thank the stars, he gasped. We thought no one would come. Walter caught the man as he collapsed, easing him to the floor. What's the situation? The crewman coughed, wincing. Critical systems failing, loyalists everywhere, crew scattered, it's chaos. As his squad dispersed, Walter activated his comm. Zephyr, status! The Jem Hadar's voice crackled through, punctuated by the clash of blades and the sizzle of energy weapons. Holding them back, but there's no end to them. We need to cut off their reinforcements. Walter's mind raced. The Loyalists were still flooding in from their own ships. They needed to seal the breach. I'll handle it. Keep pushing them back. He set off at a run, navigating the labyrinthine corridors. Distant explosions shook the deck plates. He could hear the chatter of gunfire, the cries of the wounded. Rounding a corner, he found himself face to face with a squad of Loyalists, their weapons trained on him. Walter dove for cover as energy blasts sizzled past, scorching the bulkheads. He returned fire, his rifle spitting plasma. The Loyalists scattered, seeking cover of their own. It was a deadly dance, each side trying to outmaneuver the other in the confined space. Walter lobbed a grenade, the explosion consuming two of the enemy. He charged forward, engaging the survivors hand to hand. Fists and rifle butts slammed into armor, bones crunched, blood spattered the walls. In a matter of minutes it was over. Walter stood alone amongst the fallen loyalists, chest heaving, knuckles bruised, but there was no time to rest. He had to reach the breach. He pushed on, fighting his way through pockets of resistance. The ship was a maze of smoke and death, the very air seeming to pulse with the fury of battle. At last he reached the gaping hole in the council ship's hull, the edges still glowing from the loyalists' cutting tools. Beyond, he could see the enemy vessels, disgorging more borders. Walter's eyes fell on the airlock controls, a desperate plan forming. He lunged for the panel, his fingers flying over the keys. With a final command, he sealed the breach, the heavy doors slamming shut. But his triumph was short-lived. A massive figure emerged from the smoke, clad in the ornate armor of a loyalist commander, Mac Roth, Kragnak's successor. The Jem'Hadar's eyes blazed with hatred. You think you've won, human. You've only delayed the inevitable. Walter raised his rifle, his finger tightening on the trigger. We'll see about that. They clashed in the cramped confines of the airlock, rifle against energy blade. Mac Roth was fast, preternaturally so. His blade wove a web of death, forcing Walter back. The Jem'Hadar staggered back, dark blood seeping from a shattered nose. He snarled, redoubling his assault. Walter gave ground, his rifle taking the brunt of the blows. The weapon was tough, but it couldn't hold out forever. He needed an opening. Walter pressed the attack, hammering the Loyalist with a flurry of blows. Mac Roth reeled, his defenses crumbling. A final strike sent the energy blade flying, clattering across the deck. Before Mac Roth could recover, Walter was on him. He wrapped an arm around the Jem Hadar's throat, squeezing. Mac Roth thrashed, clawing at Walter's face, but the human held fast. Slowly, the fight drained from the loyalist. His struggles weakened, his eyes bulging. With a final gurgling rasp, he went limp. Walter let the body fall, staggering back. He scooped up his rifle, wincing at the dents and scorch marks marring its surface. Walter! Zephyr's voice, triumph and relief. The gem Hadar appeared, his armor stained with blood, the blade of Kazarak humming in his grip. The loyalists are falling back. The council ship's systems are coming back online. Walter nodded, exhaustion washing over him. It's over, we did it. They made their way to the bridge, stepping over the wreckage of the battle. The council representatives were there, bruised and battered but alive. They surged forward, clasping Walter and Zephyr's hands, tears of gratitude in their eyes. Walter met Zephyr's gaze, seeing his own emotions reflected there. Pride, relief, a sense of something greater than themselves. They had won more than just a battle. They had forged a bond, a symbol of what could be achieved when races put aside their differences and stood together. 
It was a fragile thing, this unity, but it was a start, and for now that was enough. The ship shuddered as the Loyalist fleet disengaged, fleeing before the might of the combined Galactic Council and Jem'Hadar forces. On the viewscreen, the stars stretched into the swirling vortex of hyperspace. Walter slumped into a chair, his rifle clattering to the deck. Zephyr leaned heavily against a console, the blade of Kazrak deactivating with a hiss. Around them, the crew of the council ship erupted into cheers, their voices rising in a dozen languages. The representatives, tears streaming down their faces, embraced one another. A slender, blue-skinned figure, an Andorian, approached Walter and Zephyr. The councillor's antennae quivered with emotion as he spoke. What you have done here today will be remembered. You've shown us the strength that lies in unity, the hope that can be found even in our darkest hour. Walter struggled to his feet, his body aching with a thousand bruises. We did what had to be done, what anyone would have done. The Andorian shook his head. No, not anyone. It took a special kind of courage, a special kind of belief to do what you did. He laid a hand on Walter's shoulder, then on Zephyr's. You've given us a chance, a chance to build a better future, together. Zephyr met Walter's eyes, a fierce pride burning in that reptilian gaze. Together, he echoed, his deep voice rumbling. Walter nodded, too spent for words. He looked out at the stars, at the infinite possibilities stretching before them. They had won a great victory, but he knew the fight was far from over. There would be other battles, other challenges to face. But for now, in this moment, he allowed himself to feel the weight of what they had achieved. A human and a Jem'Hadar, standing side by side, forging a new path, a new understanding. It was a small thing in the grand scheme of the galaxy, but it was a beginning. And as the council ship sailed on through the void, the wounds of battle still fresh, Walter felt a flicker of something he hadn't felt in a long time, something that had been buried under the scars and the cynicism of a lifetime of war. Hope. The Jem Hadar transport ship descended through the swirling clouds of the homeworld, the city's towering spires gleaming in the distant sun. Walter stood at the viewport, Zephyr at his side, as the Galactic Council representatives murmured quietly behind them. The ship settled onto a landing pad, the engines whining as they powered down. Zephyr led the way down the ramp, his bearing proud despite the weight of recent events. Walter followed, the human delegation close behind. They were greeted by a contingent of Jem'Hadar honor guards, their armor polished to a high sheen. The guards escorted them into the heart of the city, the streets lined with onlookers. Some cheered, others watched in stony silence. The divide among the Jem'Hadar was palpable. At the Grand Council Chamber, they were ushered inside. The room was vast, the walls lined with the banners of the Jem'Hadar clans. The council members sat in a semicircle, their expressions guarded. As Walter and Zephyr took their place at the center of the chamber, the murmurs died away. An elderly Jem'Hadar, his scales dulled with age, rose to his feet. Ambassador Zephyr, he intoned, his voice carrying in the stillness. You have brought outsiders into our midst and into our affairs. Explain yourself. Zephyr stepped forward, his head held high. Honored council members, I stand before you today because of the bravery and sacrifice of these humans. Without their aid, I would have perished, and Kragnak's treachery would have gone unchallenged. A rumble of discontent rippled through the council. A younger Jem'Hadar, his eyes hard, leaped to his feet. You would have us believe that we owe a debt to these creatures, he snarled, jabbing a finger at Walter and his team. That we should welcome their interference in our affairs? Walter recognized him from Zephyr's briefing, Kazathul, a hardliner who clung to the old ways. Zephyr remained calm in the face of Kazathul's ire. I'm suggesting that we have an opportunity, a chance to forge a new path forward. These humans have shown their character, their commitment to justice and peace. Are these not values we hold dear? The debate raged on, voices rising in anger and opposition. Kazathul was relentless, his rhetoric growing more inflammatory with each passing moment. The council was split, the divisions among them laid bare. 
Suddenly a deafening boom shook the chamber. The far wall exploded inward, spraying rubble and dust. Figures poured through the breach, weapons firing. Kazathul's loyalists, their armor emblazoned with the sigil of Krag Nak's shattered army. The chamber descended into chaos. Council members scrambled for cover, some falling to the hail of fire. Walter and his team reacted instantly, diving for what little cover there was. Zephyr ignited the blade of Kazrak, the ancient weapon thrumming with power. He charged into the fray, a roar on his lips. Walter was right behind him, rifle spitting plasma. They fought their way through the chamber, the air thick with smoke and the screams of the wounded. Kazathul had planned this well. His forces were well armed and well positioned. As they burst out onto the streets, the scope of the betrayal became clear. The city was in chaos, loyalist forces clashing with those still faithful to the council. Civilians ran in terror, caught in the crossfire. Walter and Zephyr rallied what supporters they could, leading hit-and-run attacks against key loyalist positions. They fought street by street, building by building, the Blade of Kazrak, a beacon of hope in the darkness. We can't hold out much longer, Walter said, his armor scorched and battered. We need a plan. Zephyr's eyes were hard as he gazed out over the burning city. Kasthul, we cut the head off the snake, end this at the source. Walter nodded grimly. It was a desperate gamble, but what choice did they have? They gathered what fighters they could and set out, carving a path through the embattled streets. They found Kazthul in the ruins of the council chamber, surrounded by his elite guard. The traitor's eyes widened at the sight of Zephyr, the blade of Kazrak burning in his grip. You should have died on that jungle world, Kazathul spat, like the weak fool you are. Zephyr's voice was cold as the void. You speak of weakness, yet you hide behind Kragnak's shadow, you betray your own people. With a roar of fury, Kazthul charged, his guards at his heels. The battle was joined, plasma and steel clashing in the rubble-strewn chamber. Walter and his team fought with grim determination, but the loyalists were skilled and fanatical. One by one, Walter's companions fell, until only he and Zephyr remained. Zephyr dueled Kazthul in the center of the chamber, the blade of Kazrak a blur of light. The traitor was fast, his own blade a deadly whisper. They traded blows, neither giving ground. But Kazathul was fresh and Zephyr was weary from the long fight. A slash found its mark, biting deep into Zephyr's side. The ambassador stumbled, his blood staining the ancient stones. Kazathul raised his blade for the killing blow. But Zephyr was not done. With a last burst of strength, he surged forward, driving the blade of Kazrak through Kazathul's chest. The traitor fell, his eyes wide with shock. Zephyr stood over him, swaying on his feet. Then he too collapsed, his lifeblood pooling beneath him. Walter was at his side in an instant, cradling the fallen warrior. Zephyr's breath was shallow, his eyes distant. I almost take it, he rasped, pressing the hilt of the blade into Walter's hand. Take the blade, lead my people, bring them peace. Tears blurred Walter's vision as he gripped the ancient weapon. I'm not worthy, he whispered. I'm not one of you. Zephyr's hand found his, the warrior's grip surprisingly strong. You are my brother, he said, each word an effort. In all but blood, there is no one I trust more. The light faded from Zephyr's eyes, his final breath escaping in a sigh. Walter bowed his head, grief and rage warring in his heart. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.